Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spear, and I've got a lot of quests to complete, and welcome to Modern Skyblock 3 Super Shorts. Between this episode and last, I got a lot of great advice, and I'm excited to share it. I got this Knight Helmet with 730 luck. It lets me get a huge amount of special drops for mobs, like these zombie hearts, which let me get gold, and therefore this silky jewel. It has been suggested that I make a Queen of Fortune, but it needs a bat wing, and for some reason I haven't gotten any bats yet. Until then, I've been given plans for a great smooth stone generator. These two pistons will be activated by that redstone clock, and lava will fall where the cobblestone is. Now that I've got this nice long row of stone, I can mine one row, and then another. And I don't have to stop or wait for anything. This loot recycler lets me throw unwanted loot into it to get more loot bags. And remember how I said you couldn't combine bags in this pack? Well, you can with the bag storage. Sometimes melting crystal fluid is kind of slow, but the real problem is that sometimes it's actually inefficient. With crystal fluid, for one iron alchemical ore dust, we can get three pieces of iron at basic efficiency. Or, we can get two iron ore, which doubles to four iron. So, sometimes, not always, ores are much, much better than ingots. How do you find out? Well, just put these numbers into your calculator, divide 3.9962 by 2.374, and if the number is greater than 2, ingots are better. If the number is less than 2, ores are better. For this very reason, I'm going to set up a second condenser setup for ores. But first, let's do a few upgrades. Remember how this 75% yield means that we need to put in four recipes to get three iron a couple of ore dust? Let's see what happens if you put a piece of glass inside this table. The purple bar will fill up to 75%, and we won't get anything. Now, however, if we put our recipes for iron alchemical ore dust in, we'll get three ore dust for the price of three, instead of four. We can increase our yield even more, however, with Secundus alchemical dust. First, we'll need some alchemical iron, one piece of glass to prime it, and three recipes of alchemical iron. Another piece of glass to prime it, and three recipes of Secundus alchemical dust. The priming technique still works with this stuff, but we get way more yield. This wooden hopper is a problem because it pulls the alchemical ore dust out of the condenser. Luckily for us, we can still open up chests when they're under a condenser. I've just made lots of iron on chemical ore dust, so let's not waste it. Let's turn it into ore instead. How, you ask, will I double my ore? Using this sluice box. One iron mesh, one sluice box. Let's place that here, next to our crushing table. And right-click it with water to fill it. The water doesn't seem to last. Let's move it next to our pitcher plant. Now let's start making ores. This process is pretty slow, but soon we'll make a smooth stone generator on top of this stone casing so that we can make our ores faster. Let's hammer down our ores into rocky chunks. Then we can wash our iron rocky chunks in this Lewis box to get extra dust and iron chunks, which can smelt into two iron each. One iron gear, one iron casing, one iron alchemy component, and one iron condenser. Note, these efficiency effects stack. Let's set up our ore alchemy setup down here where we already have our Lewis box. I don't like how close this lava is to my base. But for now, we're going to pretend there's no danger and finish this setup. This condenser is ready for action. Let's see how much ore these 7 iron alchemical ore dust give us. 7 alchemical ore dust got us 23 iron ore. Not bad. This Lewis box can process up to 10 ores at once. Let's finish up the rest of these quests. Like the one for another brick casing, which lets us make glowstone. Or the one for frozen iron and 2 iron freezers, which lets us freeze things faster. One another brick casing. Now we have 3072 max heat units. I use the leftover iron casing to upgrade my condenser. Two iron freezers, which multi-block quite nicely. With netherrack, sand, and nether wart, I can make sandy netherrack, which I can freeze into soul sand, on which I can grow my nether wart. Now we can make glowstone dust, which lets us make tertius alchemical dust. As has been the trend, this is far better than the previous versions. Now that I have netherrack and this flint and steel from a loot bag, I can increase my heating power to 8 per tick, which is incredibly fast. Drawers let you store large amounts of a single item. Magma cream, liquid magma, alchemical coal, and magmified stone, which, when placed next to crystal fluid, automatically generates cobblestone. With a wooden hopper underneath the crystal fluid, we can automatically collect cobblestone. Three alchemical gold. A large amount of dirt use alchemical dust. Seriously, this stuff is killer. All we need to finish this chapter is the nether quest. But I want the ability to break obsidian first. Drying racks let me make great foods like monster jerky or mom's spaghetti. To transfer fluids at this early stage of the game, I need porcelain clay. 16 unfired porcelain, which smells such a porcelain bricks, porcelain channel, porcelain faucet. Porcelain channels will transfer fluid between themselves after they're input into by a faucet. If we had a tank here and we right-click the faucet, liquid would pour out of the tank into the channel. If we had multiple channels, we could configure their in and out areas by right-clicking on them. Two porcelain tanks, which store lava for something called the porcelain melter, which can melt metals given lava from a porcelain tank or solid fuels in a porcelain heater. A porcelain casting table will let you cast items for molten metals, 
and a porcelain casting basin, which lets you cast blocks. Ore doubling does occur in a smeltery, and in a meltery. One book, and a materials in you book, which explains all the tool materials in the game. Just because I have the extra porcelain clay, let's demonstrate the way these channels work. You can right-click on an FG connection point to create a connection point. By right-clicking on the connection point that has arrows, you can switch the arrows in the direction, or right-click again to erase the connection. I might use this in order to automate the distribution of crystal fluid early game. Firewood has the exceptional quality of auto-smelt. Let's craft lava wood by placing planks into a casting basin, lava into a porcelain tank, and right-clicking on the faucet. Once the recipe is done, you can right-click on it to pull it out. Each piece of lava wood requires 250 millibuckets of lava. There are 1,000 millibuckets in a bucket. For firewood. If we make the pickaxe head out of firewood, we'll have to repair it with firewood, and I don't want to do that. Instead, let's get the binding out of firewood to get the same stat and make the pickaxe head out of bones. One auto smelt bone pickaxe that lets me automatically turn cobblestone into stone. We now have everything we need to unlock the mystical flowers and basic farming and automation quests. What is left? but we'll work on getting into those three chapters in the next episode. Sorry about the long wait, but it's going to be like this a lot more often now. My days are getting busier. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!